Good evening, and welcome to the J. Dennis Podcast for Tuesday, September 20th, 2016, the not-so-broke-ass edition. Another late-night podcast, because I have work in the morning, and then I go right to school, and then I run some errands, have some dinner, and now I'm here, but I actually went out tonight and hit a little mini buffet because you know got some extra money can afford to go out to eat why not go have some nice conversations talk about shirts that have just a large butthole imprinted on it I mean there's a lot of good stuff to talk about a lot of good uh, things to observe out in the world but yeah needless to say this might not be my highest energized podcast that's right I'm teasing the podcast that's currently happening by saying this might be a more chill. So, if overbearing and high energy J is not really your speed, then um, this podcast might be your cup of tea. Ugh. Like, I like tea. I've got nothing but respect for it, but I prefer coffee. Even though tea isn't as damaging to your teeth, um, it's not as acidic, usually. I don't know. What the hell am I talking about? But anyway, this is the Jay Dennis Podcast for September 20th, 2016. Not so broke-ass edition. Because your boy has been picking up shifts at both jobs. Making money. Paying bills. I don't want to get ahead... I don't want to get ahead of myself. Sorry, I glitched there. I don't want to get ahead of myself and say, oh, I'm back on track. Um, Kind of am, but, you know, I don't want to get overconfident again. Like, a couple months ago, before, uh, actually it was more than a couple months ago. Jeez, time really flies. But yeah, probably back in March, April. Yeah, around the time I started the podcast, I was basically just stroking my own, you know, person and was just talking about how badass my life was and how great I was doing, all the money I was making. And you know what? I don't regret that, you know? But when life hits you and you're not in that position anymore, it sucks. And you look back and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said those things. And I'm like, dude, just because you bragged about something or you got a little overconfident about something doesn't mean, you know, the bad stuff that happened was the effect of that. I just, there are people out there that are overconfident and have a surplus of confidence when they really don't have much to show for it, but I'm still a firm believer that it's better to have too much confidence than too little confidence, because depending on what you want in life, generally speaking, more confidence will get you what you want. Um, There are people out there, and... If you're a guy, there are ladies out there that can kind of play the maternal role and be like, oh, he's shy. But generally speaking, people like more confident people. Whether they're obnoxious or arrogant or whatever, people tend to like them more. It's just the way it is. And unfortunately, that's part of the reason why so many people like Donald Trump. He's still a shit show of a presidential candidate. Still better than Gary Johnson, I guess. I can't det- I can't decide which party I find more hysterical, the conservative or the libertarian party. I dislike them both greatly for different reasons, but it just seems like libertarians are more apt to humble brag, well, while conservatives, of course, are just, like, compensating for something by being overly patriotic and waving their NRA guns around. I don't get it. Anyway, this wasn't meant to be political podcast. Hey! So, it was a good week. I, I worked. Um, usually, I don't pick up shifts. If somebody calls me and asks me to pick up a shift or if I want to come in, usually I'm just like, ah, I can't, sorry, busy. It's usually because I want to go to the gym. Do s- just I want to live my life outside of work. But then I'm just like, oh, the money I could have made. Well, 
Last week, I went to my other job, my weekend job, and I told everybody I want to work there more. So when the first opportunity presented itself, I was like, okay, this is kind of your uh, first impression ever since you've made it clear that you want to work more. So I, I took the guy up on his offer, made a lot of money that day. Then I worked the following day because I was already scheduled, and I made more than double what I was supposed to make over that weekend just because I picked up that shift. Um, and I believe before that, me and my girl went to Halloween Horror Nights, and it was opening night, so all the lines to all the houses were well over an hour or two. We wanted to see Bill and Ted, but we had to wait till next time to do that. Uh, but God, there's a good, there's a good thing and a bad thing about this story I'm about to tell. The good thing is, when we were in line for the uh, second house, the theme house, it was a 3D house, it was super trippy. There was a, a guy wearing a TCU shirt, which of course was just a automatic shout out to Bill Burr. And his podcast, because as you know, at the Jay Dennis podcast, it's also occasionally the Bill Burr podcast fan page or just the Bill Burr fan page podcast. But yeah, just walking by and just like, TCU, let's go frogs. And of course, I ended up showing my girl the I, I, I you got to give people context. You can't just be making inside jokes out loud, especially if you're just with one person. You got nobody to laugh with. They don't know the context. So, uh. I pulled up, I, I found it on YouTube, the TCU, let's go frogs story. And I was just like, it just goes to show you that uh, you could just be out there living your life and you might just do one random ass thing and some complete stranger might make an inside joke about it with his friends for like the rest of your life. Like, you could just be walking down to Subway and be like, hi, Bob. And... Like, somebody just, like, overhears you, and then they look over to their friend, Tim, and they're like, Hi, Tim! And, like, that just becomes the frickin' inside joke between you two until you die. You just die. Um, and, yeah, so the bad part of that story was, uh... I knew from the moment that we started waiting, we started waiting in line that the people in front of us were gonna suck massive taint okay so the uh, first red flag was that two of the three people were vaping and again oh god I actually went to work the other day and the guys sitting at the table outside where they all smoke they were just passionately talking about vaping and of course there was a uh, sub talk about Pokemon Go so I was more entertaining that part of the conversation but this guy's just talking about vaping like it's the coolest shit, and I'm just like, what a fag! <laughs> and it, it literally, it just seems like people that vape just suck. Like, again, they're compensating for something, and they're like, they're taking that commercial where the guy, this is like, this commercial's a few years old. The guy's like, it's time to take your freedom back. Puff on that vapor. It does, it's not going to bother anybody, especially if they have a respirator or, you know, whatever. But that shit's flavored. Why does anybody want to f smell your flavored carbon dioxide? Anyway, so that was a red flag. But, okay, so there's three people. It's two guys and a girl. The girl just, ugh, fucking hammer toe. I don't, <laughs> she just looked miserable. Just had that, like, back of your head going straight into your back. Like, there was no neck. And just constantly just, like, looking down at her phone at this game. And every time the, uh, the line would move up several feet, it would take her and this other guy forever to start walking because this cocksucker was showing her how to play the game. And it's like, it didn't even matter that the line was moving. He had to keep... He was, like, attached to her for, like, 40 minutes. Like, just looking over her shoulder, constantly pointing at the phone that she was holding, and just, like, giving her advice on how to play this stupid game. I couldn't tell if it was, like, Magic the Gathering or some weird Dungeons & Dragons-style game. 
It, was sure, it certainly wasn't Pokemon Go or Angry Birds. It was something else. And he was just passionately just like... She couldn't, like, play for a couple, like, a couple seconds without him, like, breathing down her neck. And it's not like he was harassing her, but, like, it was literally holding up the line every single time. And turns out the, the third guy was the girl's boyfriend, because eventually they started holding each other and kissing, and ugh. But the, the third guy, the third wheel, the, the guy that vaped, along with the lady, uh, was just showing her how to play the game. Wearing his uh, stupid shoes with no socks, uh, his calves kind of pissed me off. You know, I just I'm I'm one of the most judgmental people. I mean, I don't know if there's people out there, generally, that are way more judgmental than me, but I'm just like, fuck that guy's calves. Like they're they're cankles, but you're not they're not fat cankles. They're just like the calf goes straight into the ankle. There's no definition. There's no. It's just like fuck his legs. It's like wear something that'll compliment you at least a little bit but yeah i just generally don't trust people that have straight legs meaning from the knee to the ankle the entire shin and calf area are just cylindrical there's like no shape those type of people like they're fucking mouth breathers and then like there's no neck the chin just goes straight to the chest they're just like a fucking uh parallelogram walking around now, what's that called? What's well, a shape that has many sides, but doesn't have... Like, it's like a polygon. So, uh, the Pokemon Porygon is just polygon, but pronounced, uh... In the, uh... The, uh, Asian rhetoric. But, um... Ugh. But, yeah. So, yeah, those people sucked. And... I didn't have one of my grandiose moments where I was... Where I basically spoke for the crowd... And I was just like, fucking move! But <laughs> there actually was a moment where they got towards the front of the line. And they went to take a selfie. And this lady that works there, she's like, come on guys, you need to keep moving. And they just kept moving. And I, I just looked at her and I just said, thank you on behalf of this entire crowd. She's like, you're so welcome. <laughs> God. I'm just like, I just don't get people. I just, I went to the pet store today to buy a couple bags of cat food, and there were these three tabby kittens up for adoption. God damn, they were cute. Um, so yeah, I busted my hump over the weekend, made a lot of tips, made a lot of money. Uh, I didn't chafe at all. And I think it's the luck of the TCU. Go Frogs! Shirt. Shout out to Bill Burr for the laughs on his podcast. If anybody thinks that I'm ever trying to rip the guy off, and I'm probably just, I'm probably just fabricating my own allegations here. But every week, if I if I make a reference to him or his podcast, I fucking say it. I don't act like I'm saying my own shit. I actively listen to his podcast, and I'm a huge fan. It's kind of like when you have an artist that you like and you uh, not mimic or imitate per se, but you are influenced in your writing. Kind of like how Raptor Riot is heavily influenced by Limp Biscuit. Same deal. My pod the Limp Biscuit to Raptor Riot is uh, Bill Burr's podcast to mine. Except I'm trying to have a little I'm trying to have a lot of originality in both my projects, you know, including this here podcast. Just for my six or seven listeners, and maybe turn them on to Bill Burr if they haven't heard of him. It's life changing. It's nice to have little role models that don't know that they're your role models. But yeah, so I didn't chafe. I uh, peppered my jock with baby powder quite a bit. Wore uh, breathable underwear. And guys, this chafing thing is a big deal because I live in Florida. Okay? The humidity is horrific, and the stuff I have to wear to my job. It's just, it's hot. It's hot, it's irritating, it's sweaty. And it's just, by the time you leave, you look like you got off the horse. Alright, look like I got a stick up my ass. I have to be one of those assholes. And I fucking hate people that don't, that order extra side sauces, and they don't use any of them. They're like, oh yeah, can I get a couple sides of ketchup, extra couple sides of ranch, maybe some blue cheese, and then maybe a side of mayonnaise? 
And these are sides that don't come in the bottle, so you have to bring out these little sides. They got the little bits of condiment in them, and like 98% of them don't get used. So it's a fucking waste. It's, it's people are fucking animals. I used to bust tables at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, and ugh, this was back when I was like 18, I think. 18, 19. But yeah, I like. People are fucking animals. I get that they're on vacation and they ain't got to worry about cleaning up after themselves, but just like kids leaving torn up everything all over the table, it's it's disgusting. Like, you can tell by going to a restaurant if you're serving a server or a bartender because by the time you go to pick up the check, like, half the table's already cleaned up and organized for you. All the plates are stacked up. Everything's, like, consolidated, ready for you to go. It's like a courtesy. It's nice. As for my other job, which I worked uh, this morning, you know, hence the late podcast and class, um... At the risk of sounding culturally insensitive, one culture that excels, that in my experience, that has generally excelled in the uh, restaurant industry by being among the uh, higher performers of customer service, as in their service as being a customer, did not translate so well to another industry that I currently work in, it's the same industry, but it's a different, it's a different segment. Uh, it's all food, but this one's not a restaurant. Uh, it's, it's just a language barrier. And it seems like if you're native to, uh, seems like if you're native to certain countries, um, those customs tend to come over here. And even though you repeat their order back to them, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they get it, and they're like, oh, this is wrong. I wanted this, 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 and this. And they're, like, demanding everything while there's a line, and there's other people waiting. They don't give a shit. All they care about is their thing. You're like, dude, you fucked up. I read it back to you, and you said, yeah. But because of that language barrier, it fucking derails the entire deal during, like, a rush. And it's it's a fucking nightmare. But, yeah. You guys wouldn't even know what uh, culture or uh, country or group of countries I'm talking about. I just said that in one segment, in my experience, they were among the best people I've ever uh, served or bartended. And uh, here, it's uh, if they're not native, they're not American. You know, they're not American cultured, then uh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Not every time, just a couple of regulars that come in and they just really fuck everything up and nobody that works there likes them. It's a fucking nightmare. Uh, yeah. So, Raptor Riot is, uh, it feels good to be writing lyrics again. Because after I finished uh, Sabotaged, I didn't take a break from writing music, but I took a break from writing lyrics. You know, kind of took a couple months where I didn't really write any lyrics at all. Um, but right now, I'm working on a track that was uh, recorded, mixed, mastered, written by my drummer. And it sounds super new metal. I love it. Of course, if, if you're going to be in Raptor Riot, you got to write new metal. So we ain't fucking around with this track. So I'm writing lyrics right now. This is like the first time I've ever had to write lyrics to a song that I'd, I didn't write. So, it's a little refreshing. Well, actually, no, just in this project, in my, and just in Raptor Riot, a couple years ago, I was in a band where one of my best friends wrote all these songs, and all I had to do was write uh, lyrics. Just as the vocalist, all I had to do was write lyrics. I didn't, I didn't have any musical input or anything, and I was okay with that because I liked the music that came out. Um... Jeez, what are we about 20 minutes into this thing? But yeah, so Raptor Riot's working on a new track right now. Um, I should be tracking vocals in the next week or so. Uh, but other than that, um, yeah, just stay tuned. This kind of just came out of nowhere. I know I've been talking about uh, music videos and stuff, but again, just talking. 
still figuring out what I want to do because parts of Raptor Riot are still unfinished and ungrounded. Uh, so before I make any major moves, I have to really think some of them out, okay? But releasing music is easy. So that's still something that can be done. But yeah, as for school, as for school, yo, my fucking uh, real estate law class, which is an elective, I'm just taking it because I needed to fill some space, take another class to graduate, blah, 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 blah. That class is a bitch, you know? It's it's interesting material. The professor is good at kind of keeping the class engaged. It, it meets once a week, so it's a long lecture. But I had read all these reviews on Rate My, Rate My Professor that she grades super harsh. And it's true. So, to those that don't study or practice law, there's these things out there called case briefs. And we were supposed to write a case brief for a certain chapter and on a scale of 0 to 25, 25 being the highest score you could get, the class average was a 60%, like 15 out of 25. The class average was a 60% on the first case br brief of the semester, meaning most of these people have probably never written a brief in their whole life, including myself. So I'm like, what the fuck? I feel like the paper had some substance. But it's like, look, it doesn't have to be a hundred or even an A. But geez, can you at least like C or B? Like, be a little more understanding. Does isn't the idea that it seems like everybody got a D kind of uh, questionable? And yeah, the quizzes are fucking hard too. They're like ten questions, and you only have ten minutes to take it. And ha some of the questions that aren't true or false. They require more than a minute to think about it. It's like, dude, I don't know. But anyway, my other class that meets once a week, actually I have three classes that meet once a week, but my other one, my other class that's uh, once a week and long, it's uh, professional selling, which sounded intimidating at first because like, I never liked the idea of becoming a salesperson or getting into sales. But this professor is easily the best professor I've ever had at this university. And um, he's really, motivating in the idea that like just because you have certain things in your life you want to do it doesn't mean you have to completely close off or ignore any other opportunities out there that being said i actually entertain greatly the idea of becoming a salesperson one day whether it be for a furniture store a car lot whatever i i might be in sales sometime who knows uh it seems kind it seems pretty exciting uh but the annoying thing about that class is there's this uh, douche that always, since day one, can't go a single class without quoting Wolf of Wall Street. Like, how hacky is that? Like, don't get me wrong. A couple years ago when it came out, I saw it several times, loved it, shared some Wolf of Wall Street Jordan Belfort quotes. Hey, it was feel good. But now it's just gotten kind of hacky. You know, sometimes things are topical and they're good, but after a while they get kind of stale. But yeah, the other day he was like, oh yeah, what's something that uh, you would cold call or uh, sell, uh, sell on the phone? And the guy's just like, huh, penny stocks to Wall Street. Like, yeah, we get it. You got a picture of Jordan Belfort in your wallet and you crank it. I didn't say that part, but actually on one of the first days of class, this guy literally quoted Wolf of Wall Street like eight times almost. And I'm like, Jesus, dude, you got a picture of him in your wallet? <laughs> and like, yeah, somebody giggled. But you know how when you say something mean, you, 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 you kind of say what you feel that maybe a lot of people around you, including yourself, are thinking, but you just say it, but people are too afraid to support you publicly, but you're still saying what everybody's thinking? Yeah, I've been that guy maybe one too many times where... A lot of times I kind of just blend in and don't really stir the pot. But other times, if I'm feeling frisky and I'm enjoying my surroundings, I might speak up. But yeah, I feel like too many people are too scared to be like, Oh, that was funny. Or maybe I'm just not funny. Maybe that's why I only have six or seven listeners on this podcast. But hey, I think I'm funny. Uh... 
And as for my last class, that meets once a week. It's not a long class, though. It's just like a lab. Um, she encourages us to... Uh, she's like, you'll get five extra credit points if you turn in this paper a week early. So it's like due next Friday. But if you turn it in this Friday, get some extra credit, y'all. So I'm actually probably going to do that. There have been like a handful of times in my college career where I would actually do stuff early and not have to worry about it and wait till the last minute. But of course, as a professional procrastinator, there have been plenty of things where I waited till the last minute and uh, somewhat performed well under pressure. Other times, not so much. But anyway, enough about school, enough about the uh, academia. Uh, how about How about that Breaking Bad? While we're talking about things that are relative in 2016. Uh, I just finished season four. Me and my girl just finished, uh, finished season four. And there's five seasons overall for those who don't watch the show. Or didn't watch it ever. It's on Netflix. I'm watching it so I can watch Better Call Saul. Because I've been hearing a lot of good things about that show. Better Call Saul is a more recent show. But it's a prequel to Breaking Bad. So... To fully enjoy, enjoy Better Call Saul, I'm gonna. That's why I'm watching Breaking Bad. Uh, they're saying you'll enjoy Better Call Saul better if you watch Breaking Bad first instead of watching the prequel to Breaking Bad, which is Better Call Saul, and then watch Breaking Bad. So yeah, I followed the internet's advice on that, and I'm glad I watched uh, Breaking Bad first because I'm thoroughly enjoying it. The ending of season four. Fucking t Harvey Two Face on Gus, and that scream he does right before that explosion goes off. You just hear that ding, 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 and then it just zooms in on Gus. Ah! And then Jesse. But yeah, fucking best season. I I can't wait to see the end, like the 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 series finale. But just like the ending, the season four, oof. God damn. I can only imagine if I was, like, watching that show as it was happening. Like, find out what happens next week on Dragon Ball Z. But just, like, back in the day when you had to... There's still shows where you have to do that. You know, Big Bang Theory or stuff. Where you have to wait till next week the new episode comes out instead of just binge watching it. But, like, damn. Just living in this age where you can just watch all these shows and like binge watch it and just enjoy it like immediate gratification there's some some things about that that's just awesome um but yeah there was actually a a Monday morning podcast from Bill Burr where he said don't try and binge watch Breaking Bad it's like a fine wine just take it one episode at a time it's like a, you know just one episode a day if you have to but I'm just like, nah, if I can, I'll watch maybe two or three at a time. But uh, I like to watch it with my girl, so... I think... I think if I hadn't paced myself, I would have been done with it maybe a week ago. But I still think I'm doing pretty well. But yeah, that show is excellent. I would watch it again. Uh, because of Jesse! Jesse's character is fucking awesome. His development... I've, I've really been trying to pay attention to like how camera working is because you know I have a YouTube channel I kind of care about media it's interesting to see how story storylines develop plot holes character development I love character development I love seeing how certain characters grow throughout a series and just like Jesse Pinkman his character from season one up to season five is just the the, the maturity and just like all the everything my analysis might not sound professional, but it just it's it just blows my mind. And of course, you know, Walter Walter White's development is also pretty staggering. It's damn. Uh But hey, while we're talking about drugs, uh fucking tried the Cheeto fries from Burger King. Yeah, Burger King brought their uh chicken fries back, which I've never eaten but they have a Cheeto-flavored one, which I know is probably more dangerous than meth. There's probably more chemicals in the breading for that than there is in, like, an 18-pack of Surge. But yeah, they were not so dank. I did not care for the Cheeto fries. Uh, 
They weren't horrible. Yeah, this is this is the Jay Dennis fast food review podcast. Okay, today we're gonna talk about the Big Buford. We're, we're gonna talk about the Western barbecue burger from Burger King, and and we're gonna talk about Taco Bell's uh, cream pie chalupa fiasco, a uh, fiesta with white balsamic Mexican sauce which is just dripping as you bite into the end and it falls into that paper wrapper that you end up licking up because there's a little bit of ground beef in there. Worth it! And so you find cheese between your crotch because you can't wait to get home. You gotta eat it while you drive. (laughs) I love when, um... Uh, I don't know if, uh, shit, what's his name? Kevin Hart. I don't know if Kevin Hart was ever the first person to go, I will go home and beat ya ass. Instead of beat your ass, it's like beat ya ass. And I don't know if that's just like a cultural thing. Kind of like when black people say, I'm funna, I'm funna take this. I don't know. But when, <laughs> instead of saying your, you say ya. Yeah. When you find a piece of lettuce between your crotch, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. It's just the the English language. I I get why it's so complicated for so many people. Like the English language isn't the only language that has slang, but just like so many words that have many meanings. I get why it's ranked like it's ranked like the third hardest language in the world. Which to me, as a hardworking American, I should be able to learn the Espanol or the Francois. But that just goes to show you that just because you're not American doesn't mean that somebody is not better than you. People coming over here from uh, South America, or uh, Central America, or uh, Canada, and uh, speaking better English, just goes to show you that just because you're not a white man with your NRA rights over there, that uh, you're smarter, you sure as shit ain't more ethical with your uh, blue lives. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of. You ever just get those waves of energy that don't make sense? And then you just go off on a bullshit tangent? Diarrhea of the mouth like every other week on this podcast? Um, I still can't find Crystal Pepsi. I know it was only out for a limited time. And as a 90s nostalgic... In, ca- in case you guys didn't know, I'm a 90s nostalgic kind of guy, you know? It's not like I'm trying to recreate music that was uh, popular in the 90s or early 2000s. It's not like I'm trying to do that or anything. But when uh, a product that was available when you were a toddler decides to uh, make its way back, and you don't feel like purchasing it at Walmart, you, uh... Find yourself going on the distribution site and looking over, looking at all the places it ships to, all the stores and different locations of those different stores and companies. None of them have it. I get that it was out for a limited run, but it's still advertised that, hey, out of the sink. Hey, this isn't just banter for the podcast. I need you out. Thank you. All right. I'm back. Okay, I missed you. Um, but yeah, if your distribution site is gonna say that it's still out, because it it like if you looked up uh, Pepsi Blue, it would say in parentheses not available. Pepsi Blue was the shit. All right, fuck all that Mountain Dew different color code red, uh, Live Wire orange, uh, Sprite remix, uh, tropical. Jizz burst, like, F all that, alright? Pepsi Blue was tits. And I'd never got a chance to try, uh, Pepsi... Uh, Crystal Pepsi. Crystal Pepsi. So I just really want some. To the point where I was actually looking online. People are selling it on Amazon. And there's this place called Soda Emporium, where they only got, like, a limited batch. Where... They were reasonably priced, but the shipping was absurd. So I'm like, okay, I don't need it that bad. The money's not burning a hole through my wallet that bad that I need to purchase soda. Alright, eventually I want to have a house where I have, like, 
Like, eventually, I do want to become a collector of, of, of things. I'd like to have space where I can have all these retro games, uh, retro, uh, like, just 90s apparel, uh, paraphernalia. Ah. Mostly, mostly apparel. I used to bash 90s fashion so much. It's so corny and, like, baggy. And, like, how people didn't get, like, caught onto stuff all the time with those jackets tied around their waist. I don't know. But everything's just become way too skin tight now. And as the obesity, overweight percentages just go up and the clothes get tighter, it's just horrific. People were in better shape back in the day and they wore bigger clothes. I'm in somewhat better shape now. I'm more mus muscular now, but now I want to wear bigger, baggier clothes. I don't want to wear tight clothes anymore. Like, yeah, I wore skinny jeans and tight shirts, but that was back when I was kind of thin. Like, a, a, a meager 160. Or, fuck, I was like 150 when I graduated high school. And then, over the course of seven years, I gained 50 pounds. Um... Mostly in my butt, but, uh, or in my head, I don't know. You, you really do get a big head if you drink a lot, <laughs> but I don't, I don't drink a lot of beer, so it's not like a whiskey head or anything. Uh, but yeah, so you, you put on weight and you want to wear bigger clothes. They breathe better, especially in this fucking humidity. Uh, but yeah, all that being said, I actually really appreciate the nineties fashion now. And I kind of want to bring it back. Just like the sound. Just like the culture. Just like the, the, the slang. And just like the Crystal Pepsi. Jesse! Yeah, so I tweeted at them. I tweeted at Pepsi and I hit up their corporate site. Sent in some emails. Hopefully I get something back. But unfortunately they're always second place to Coke. So they might not perform as well. But I got really sad. Because I went to my G I went to my Yab. This is one thing I hate about soda, and I hate about Coke or Pepsi, is that they have contracts with certain vendors. So if you want to go somewhere, or to a park or something, you're, like, I'm not married to one or the other. I rarely drink soda as it is, but I just really want to drink that Crystal Pepsi and see if it's any good. And if it's bad, at least I can say I tried it, and it's caffeinated! It's my crack. Uh, Jim's been good to me. I mentioned that because uh, there's a segue in these in these podcasts, all right? I mentioned the crack because I take meth lab. Oh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> I could have segued with that as well. Took meth lab. Actually, no, I took M1, the more explosive pre-workout, before I did leg day yesterday. And goddamn, I did a really good leg day without even deadlifting. I didn't deadlift because uh, I really did bust my ass at work over the weekend, and I kind of strained my back a little bit, so I didn't want to deadlift. So I just mostly just focused on legs, the machine work, and... Just so you guys know, I don't really say and. Like, and. It's, a. Uh, there was this guy at the bar that I used to manage and bartend at, and, um... It, it was... Believe it or not, he was like a Jamaican biker. Or something. Uh, yeah, because guys from Jamaica can ride bikes. Okay? Alright? It's 2016. Um, but God, this guy was fucking hilarious. But there was just this random time where he was just making a point. He was just making a point. And he was yelling at the guy making a point, but he was being funny about it. And then the other guy was just, he was just talking back at him. And you, you couldn't make a point without talking back to this guy like this. And then this guy was just like, I'm making the point again. And... And then he makes the point again, but just like, just randomly bursts out, AND, or AND, however he says it, however I've been saying it, AND, and I'm making the point again. But yeah, just that random, it, again, you could be sitting at a bar, and you just randomly go, AND, and it, it sticks with me, for months. I might get famous. <laughs> I might get famous for my and. 
But yeah, so the gym's been good to me. Good leg day yesterday. Wanted to work out today, but, uh, clusterfuck busy this week. But at least I'll be making some money. I fucking hate that. I don't like being overworked because then my gym, like, something always suffers. If I have all this off time, like I did over the summer, I get to go to the gym all the time. And make all these gains. With TLM research products assisting. But then I'm not, I don't, I, I got no money. It's like having too many hobbies and too many interests and too much desire to make money to pay your bills. It's like, where do you find the time to uh, do certain things? That's why I don't have much of a social life. That's why I... Uh, but then I look at what other people have and I think, okay, maybe they don't have something that I have. They have all this time that they put into their social life or into their bands, but they might not have... I'm not saying I'm better, but they might not have a stronger relationship with somebody. They might not have uh, bigger biceps. Something always suffers. And that's why you got to think about what your priorities are in life. And sometimes that's, that's why it's hard to have so many interests. It's like, look, if I can go lift weights at least like twice a week, that's decent for me. Twice a week. But optimally, I'd rather go like five or six times a week. But of course, I did that over the summer for like two months. I went like five, six days a week. But then I had to take a week or two off to recover. Because if you go that consistently, you have to actually give yourself optimal time to rest. Uh, but yeah, so my mom's birthday is coming up. Uh, this is this, this podcast worst segues there's no segues there's no fat fucks on segues in this podcast but yeah i'm going to vero beach this weekend um been making a lot of uh high school memories there since i was 14 a lot of fun teenage angst to be had made a lot of friends there actually uh i i, I met I met some dude there, and like we just like hung out, and then we found another group of teenagers, but we thought they were annoying. So from like the fifth floor of the lobby, because there were like balconies, we just dropped like cold, ice cold water on these people, and all you heard was, <coughs> and then eventually we ran into them and we realized they were cool. But then you know maybe like a day or so into the uh, us becoming friends, we're like, oh yeah, that was us that dumped water on you. Oh my god, you're so. We find out they're like the same age as us, so we all met each other, and we added each other on MySpace! And, um... That's another time I miss. The mid-2000s. That was the shit. I had the best childhood. A child of the 90s and the 2000s can't touch it. But... I would have rather have been born in 81. You know why? Because I would have came of age in 1999. What's up? What? 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 What's up? What's up? Oh no! Oh okay. Hey, so I'm back. So yeah, all the teenage angst going to Vero Beach. It's gonna be like a two and a half hour trek. Gonna have to get somebody to watch my cats for like two days or a day and a half. And it's gonna be fun though. I love that place. Um, I don't think I've been there in like two years. Anyway, I guess I'll uh, conclude this uh, unnecessarily long podcast with my um, amazing stats about the NFL. Yeah. I'm part of a group, an online group, where you just pick games. And usually there's 16 games a week. Yeah, look that butthole girl. Yeah, look that butthole girl. Yeah. Sorry, inside joke. Um, it wasn't actually happening to me. That's, that's gross. Any guy that wants his asshole eaten out, I don't know what the fuck you're into. If you want, if you if you want that tingling sensation, go buy some one white Charlies 
from Dollar Shave Club and get that peppermint tingle that you need on your starfish. Dollar Shave Club isn't even advertised on my podcast. I don't have advertisers. I will someday, though, and then the uh, not-so-broke-ass edition of the J. Dennis podcast will be the uh, not-so-unadvertised. Anyway, uh, out of 16 games this week, I got nine of them correct. At the last minute, I switched my Monday night pick to uh, Philly, and they ended up winning over the Bears. And Miami, Miami Dolphins are my team. Okay, so, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Laugh, go ahead. Just, go ahead. You think you think you think you're hot shit over there? Well, yeah. Here's the obligatory here's the obligatory part where I just like, yeah. Who's your team? Yeah, Steelers. You got the most Super Bowl history, uh, most Super Bowl victories in history. That's cool. Yeah. Where's your uh, perfect season there, huh? That's what I thought. Oh, oh, Dolphins fan. Perfect season. That's all you got. Couldn't even get a Super Bowl with uh, Dan Marino in the '80s. Be like, dude. Yeah, of course that's all I got. That's why I talk about it. Only team. Ah, what about the Patriots? Who cares if the NFL added three games? It doesn't fucking matter. That that Super Bowl pressure is still the same after all these decades. And the Patriots could not win. It's just like the movie Moneyball, where it's like, it doesn't matter if we win all these games. If you don't win the fucking big game at the end, none of it matters. It doesn't. That's why the Patriots... Not so perfect season was not so perfect. They got fucking derailed by the Giants. And then every asshole who can't produce a single thought was just like, "Ah! Defense wins Super Bowls. That's the same mouth-breathing moron that says shit like, Oh, Donald Trump spinks his mind. Just can't produce a single original thought. I don't care if you like him. Just say something original. You can't. That's why you gotta have somebody speak for you. You gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have God, Jesus, speak for you. You gotta have, you know, these uh, career politicians speak for you, tell you what to believe. Gotta have the, uh, NRA holes. You know, just uh, fear monger some uh, statistics into your head that don't matter because you can actually manipulate statistics to tell almost any story you want. Statistics can be a beautiful thing if they're, you know, used appropriately. But if you have a. What the fuck? I'm not even messing with the wire. But if you have a, uh, a bad sample, it doesn't matter. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. Hold up, my, my computer's freezing. I'm really hoping this doesn't affect the podcast. It's affecting my world right now, but in the uh, future, this um may or may not... Okay, it looks like it's fine. Hold up. My screen's not popping up, okay? So I'm just going to keep talking. No, I don't want the reference manual. Okay, am I still recording? All right, we're about 40 half, 40 half and an eight, 48 and a half minutes in. I told my girlfriend this would be a uh, calm podcast. I wouldn't be yelling, but you know what? The energy got up. I got riled up, and my voice isn't actually tired, but I'm tired. So uh, to my drummer, might have to wait until Monday when I have my friend come over to track my vocals. I might not be able to do it myself, but we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Thank you to everybody who listens to the podcast. I need more shit to talk about, people, okay? My life can only be so exciting sometimes, okay? So I really apologize if you're sitting over there hating yourself because I'm talking about my life and my politics and my outlook. If you want my insight on how to talk to people because I'm not awkward. I'm not the fucking outcast of the group. I'm either that or the live wire. But anyway, if you're some guy and you don't know how to talk to a girl, or you're some girl and you want to know why a guy's acting a certain way, maybe, I might be able to shed some light. Okay? Having confidence isn't a bad thing. I could teach you, or not teach you, I could shed some light, offer some insight. I'm not a professional. 
Okay? By saying that, I absolve myself of all legal restriction. But, and if you want to add any questions about me, about life, about anything to this podcast, just go to the link below on my YouTube channel and by... Uh, I'm hoping by the next couple podcasts I have this thing on iTunes, because I've been looking up how to do it. RSS feeds, URLs and shit, I've been trying to figure it out. It can't be that hard, but I don't have my own website yet, so I don't have an RSS feed. But I'll figure it out. But for the meantime, send in any questions to jdennis21 at gmail.com. The way to spell it is down below in the description box. J-A-Y-D-E-N-N-I-S 21 at gmail.com. And if you want to support the podcast, you want to support me, go to Bandcamp to buy the Raptor Riot Sabotage DP for $2.99. It's going to be raptorriot.bandcamp.com to buy the Sabotaged EP for $2.99. It's three original tracks, New Metal Revival, and then a bonus Limp Biscuit cover of Nobody Loves Me from their 1997 album, $3 Bill, y'all. It's my first time professionally <laughs> covering a new metal song. It's not the first time I've covered a song. I covered Hollaback Girl. But that's on my YouTube channel as well. But anyway, thank you guys for listening. I will talk to you next week. Goodbye.